Hello and welcome back. We have created a wide number of builds that require users to reach critical health to activate a boost of damage from near death experience. And although many can be seen as a failure, some have managed to do really well in the toughest areas. Today's build is one of them, as it will provide a sheer ton of firepower to play as long as you keep firing, keep throwing grenades, and not care about your health too much in the process. Using Action Warwick's Tommy's matchbook and spark of recharge are the items needed to pull this off and if done right you'll get a lot of bonuses in the process such as a 400% ability NG regen, unraveling, jolt and scorch debuffs that can be applied in large numbers, huge damage boost from all sources and free healing that will boost your build to keep firing. As mad as this may sound it's actually quite a rush to use so let's get rid of the parts you'll need. To start with Aspect, you're going to want to have Touch of Thunder which allows our pulse grenades to create ion traces periodically and also get stronger the longer it is out. Then you want Knockout where quickly wounding a target will increase your mini damage and start regaining your health. Touch of Thunder is going to allow you to push your pulse grenades to do a lot more damage over time while also giving us ion traces at the same time. This here will allow us to gather ability energy even faster when in non-critical health phases. For the fragments, Spark of Ions, where defeating jolt targets creates ion traces, Spark of Recharge, where while critically wounded, your mini and grenade energy recharge faster, Spark of Resistance, where you'll get a 25% damage reduction while surrounded, and Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. As a matter of fact, you must have the Spark of Recharge fragment or else the build is pointless to use, as once you reach critical health, this one fragment will allow you to use your abilities at a faster rate without the need of mods or weapon perks to trigger it. In our case, the Tommy's matchbook effect will be triggering this effect, but outside of that, you won't need certain weapon perks from there. The rest of the fragments are stuff we are heavily familiar with, where Spark of Resistance is also another top contender for allowing us to survive at lethal situations when in critical health. For the mods and stats, both resilience and discipline will play a part within the build, while strength will also have a hand every now and then. Our resilience stat is at a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction against enemies groups, and this here will be a must have for not only surviving one shot hits, but also making sure that we don't die too quickly when we reach critical health. You see, once we reach that part of our health, we only need one small hit from an enemy to trigger spark of recharge effect. The issue here though is that in GMs, every source of income and damage tends to be very large and heavy and could potentially one-shot us if we are not careful. This is why having a higher tier as Spark of Resistance will be important for the survival of the build as once recharge has been triggered, all we need to do is just get a kill with Tommies to get a health regen buff and then keep going as long as possible. Our discipline is at tier 10 which will grant us a 1 minute 1 second cooldown using our pulse grenades which is high for maxed out stat. However, do take in mind that I've created a system to help with recharge rates. Outside of Spark of Recharge, we are also using the grenade kickstart, charged up and element charge mods. With charged up, we'll have 4 charges overall and having such charges will allow us to get between a 16-34% to energy grenade recharge back. Our build can create up to 4 ion traces upon grenades used and this here will give us a armor charge back every time. Using this cycle will grant us grenade energy back with how often we get ion traces, thus we can shorten our cooldown rate based on our mods and ion traces overall. Even though recharge will be doing the heavy lifting, there will be some situations to where we can't use Tommy's effect without dying in the process, thus this alternative method made available. In this section, I will be covering the armor charges and additional mods. Charged up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect. Next, adding the firepower mod will allow us to create orbs of power since we don't have any kinetic mods this time to use. Lastly, having ashes to assets will be a must have with how often you'll be using your grenades, while heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger will finish the build off just from there. For weapons, we have Tommy's matchbook, which is a solo weapon that not many people use, although it has now been drastically improved on from here. Although the weapon drains the user's health down to critical, it will in return grant the user a massive damage boost and scorch targets at the same time. Since the seasonal mods allow users to scorch anyways, it doesn't really apply so much to the weapon. Although, if you can get yourself rage in the process, you can explicitly apply some extra heat to whatever target you're against. As a slight warning, 
I recommend you use your ADS a lot more here, since it's a lot more safer to activate your perks instead of relying on the hipfire method, which would apply more damage for the user as well. For Heavy, we'll run on the Song of Ear Ute with target lock and rewind rounds. It's suitable for majors, ultras, mini bosses, and bosses overall. The weapon can be easily used to cover more of our angles and situations as long as you keep firing non-stop. Since we have war rigs equipped, we can use this weapon as a primary when things get too heated in our environment. At the same time, the following perks drastically benefits our exotic, since the two in action will allow consistent damage and even more ammo to use than fire. If you can't get the following, which is a raid exclusive, try and get the swarm from Zavala instead. With the ease of use or utilizing non-stop firepower at our hands, the given build can escalate singular damage against enemies by tenfold as long as the user can remain alive until then. Operating Tommy's matchbook with Spark of Recharge is both interesting to use in endgame and GMs, while also critically risky in a number of environments, which if not understood correctly, can result in a quick and timely death. The combo do provide a large bonus of ongoing health regen and ability regen, which is similar to Operating Heart of Imus Light with the Solar Subclass and Restoration Effect, but the following is more aggressive in that stance, to which I would highly recommend players do a few more things before trying it out. Firstly, be sure there's enough cover available when using the build, as the moment you hit critical health, it will only be a matter of time before a certain attack will one shot you in the process. Secondly, do not be afraid to keep firing your weapon even while in cover, since War Rig's effect will grant us enough reserve ammo to get away with doing this. And lastly, don't be afraid to hold out and let your teammates do the rest of the job, as it's not always clear to keep firing at some targets and seemingly getting away with it. The pose of a high risk war playstyle of the build is generally the name of the game when using the build in full view of endgame content. And although it may look and sound daunting at first, it's actually quite reasonably easy to play. You'll have a ton of ability regen being granted towards your use of Tommy's via Sparkle Recharge effect, so you can use and abuse your grenades and abilities as long as you activate its key requirements. After that, you have the ability to scorch and ignite targets via your solo weapon in hand, which you can enhance more by applying these seasonal mods if you wish. And then lastly, although our primary will often be changed to accommodate gameplay, having a strand weapon so you can activate unraveling rounds can become incredibly useful when used against mini bosses, as you can then apply Jolt, Scorch, and now unraveling all in one. It has a large value of increasing the player's damage the lower one's health gets, and once you understand the full grasp of how to fully make this work, you'll be surprised with the level of things you can get away with. The overall effectiveness of the build allows players to pretty much destroy enemies in a reckless manner, to which requires the sacrifice of one's health to achieve maximum damage. It has the tools available to extend and prolong a user's life so you don't consistently die without quickly. I recommend as an endgame and GM runner to try this out just once, just so you can get the feel of playing with a much lower health build than what we are used to, and from there to decide on what you like to change or improve the build to your own playstyle. So go ahead and give this build a try. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content to share then please leave a comment below. While well, at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link from the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.